Hey guys, so if you're watching this tutorial today, it's because you wanted to learn how to do curls with a curling wand. I know the idea of using a curling tool that doesn't have a clamp on it can be a little bit uh, tricky, but I just wanted to show you all how simple it actually is. So before we get started, I'm just going to let you know as to what you're going to need for this tutorial. Obviously you're going to need a curling wand, so hopefully you've bought one, or um, if you don't actually have one, maybe this will encourage you to go get one. For the products, we are going to be using uh, two different types of hairsprays. The reason for that is I want one that's more of a working spray, and I'm going to use another one that's a little more of a harder, firmer hold to it. So as we're going with the curls, we're going to use the working spray, and then afterwards we're going to cover everything with the holding hairspray. Another thing that I think is really important to use is some kind of heat protection for your hair. Anytime we apply any type of heat to our hair, we want to make sure that um, we use a proper protection for it. So what I've chosen to use is a, one of AG's products. It's called um, a BB cream. So just like you use for your makeup, there's also one for your hair. So it's very simple how to use it. So we'll go through that as well. And then I'll show you when I put it on as we go through the tutorial. The other thing I'm going to be using at the end of the uh, hairstyle is AG's smoothing balm. Um, it's really nice because it's not too heavy, but it just helps control any flyaways or frizzy pieces that we may have left over. So we'll be using that as well. The only other two things you're going to need um, is a clip just in case you have really thick hair and you need to separate it just so you um, feel like you can work in smaller sections and makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to need the clip. And then also just the brush. So actually I'm going to start off with the brush in my, with my hair right now because um, I just want to make sure all the tangles are out of my hair before we start curling. That's actually a really important part of any um, styling to your hair because if you have knots in it, no matter what you do, whether it's curling or straightening it, it's going to make it look messy and unfinished. So we don't obviously want that. So I just uh, freshly blow dried my hair so it has a little bit of uh, volume and frizz to it. So that's why I just want to make sure it's really nice and brushed out. For this style, you can obviously part your hair however you like and whatever you're used to wearing it. Um, but for me, to, for today, I'm going to part it down the center just how I have it here. Just so I can get a really nice, full, um, big bodied, uh, curly look. So, I've already started warming my Sultra curly wand up and so now we're going to get started. Um, it's always good to start with the underneath part of your hair. So just choose whatever side you want to start with and we going to start on this side. And very simply, I'm just going to section it literally in half. So I have my bottom half and my top half of my head. So I'm going to clip this up in a way so it doesn't um, interrupt what I'm doing down here, it doesn't confuse me. And once I have my section, it's like I said, it's about half of your hair on this side. I'm going to spray it with the working spray. This is going to really help me get the best hold for my curls. I find if I do this process, my curls can easily last up to three days and not lose their shape. So that's a big bonus. And then I'm going to use the BB cream next. And you use it um, on dry hair because that way it creates a barrier between um, your hair follicle and the actual heat. So that's very important. So you just want to, I don't, I try to whip it too close to my root just because like, my hair gets oily pretty easily. But the ends of my hair, because it's been processed with color and because I use lots of heat on it, I want that extra protection on it. So now that I'm sure that it's covered and um, I've had a hairspray, I'm going to start curling. And the best place to start is usually at the back of your head, just so that you can work forward. So my sections are always about one inch wide, just because I find that's manageable and I get the right size curl that I want. And actually, just so you know, my curling one's a one inch curling iron, so that's also important. I think the key when you're choosing a good wand is that you want to make sure you get a good size for you, so if you have really thick hair, Getting a really small barrel is really not ideal for you because you're going to be taking a lot longer to curl your hair. Whereas if I find that because I have the one inch, I can kind of get both types of curls. If I want really, really big, um, kind of just big waves, I can do that by just taking a bigger section of hair. Or if I want the really tight curl, I can take a very small section of hair and get that as well. So I always advise people to go for the one inch just because it's flexible. So you can see I'm going here with the curls. I hold it for about 10 seconds because my iron's hot so it works good. I don't have to let it sit too long. And I always just kind of hold it before I completely drop my hair because I find that helps um, with let the hair uh, cool down before I drop it so it has a chance to settle into its new, its new style. 
And just in case you guys are nervous about it, uh, most curling ones do come with their own personal glove. So that's a, like a heat barrier for your hand. So if you are nervous and worried that you're going to burn your fingers or your arm or anything like that, um, you can always use the glove. I've just done it enough that I don't feel like, I feel like I get a better result when I don't wear a glove. And also I'll make a note of this too, because I'm working on this side, I want the curls to go away from my face. So that's why I'm pulling them the direction I am and holding the iron up top. So now that I'm in this section, I'm going to use the holding spray that I, that I am. Um, make sure I get it all in there. And again, when you're spraying your hairspray, for your final style, you want to make sure you're not spraying against it. So I wouldn't hold it with this hand spray towards this way because I want the hair to fall back to the left of me, not the opposite. So you're going to spray in the direction that you want the curls to stay. Right. Now I'm going to move on to the top section here. And for me, because I don't like super tight curls, I don't have to make three sections just because I feel like this will accomplish the look I want, but if you want maybe, if your hair has a hard time staying in a curl, then you might want to actually go through and break it up into three separate sections and then you'll get more control over every section you're using. So again, we'll start with what we did with the bottom half. We're going to spray it with the working hairspray. Take some baby cream. Just work it through the ends. And just from my top, the front of my head here too, like as I said, it's more damaged, so we're going to be taking it from the top as well. Okay, now we're ready to start curling. So again, we're going to start at the back, following the same pattern we did for the bottom, because we want it all to sit in unison. If you like a messier look, you don't have to follow this exact pattern. You could curl the opposite way. You could do um, both layers different directions, if you want a not-so-uniform look. Again, I'm sticking with my sections that are about uh, one inch wide. And I'm wrapping away from my face. Again, hold it to let it cool, especially as the iron gets hotter. It works faster, so when you release it, you don't want to just drop it because it doesn't give it a chance to actually set, it, set into its uh, new form. Okay, so now that we're getting closer to the front of my head, normally I've, I have uh, grown out side bangs. So at this point, because I'm doing a middle part, I want to make sure the front has enough volume and doesn't look slick to my face. So to accomplish that, I'm going to have to not just curl to the side like I was for the rest of my hair on the, my left side of my head. I'm going to actually hold the curling rod above my head vertically and I'm going to wrap it upwards. Again. Um, you just let it sit for about 10 seconds and then release. And this one's key actually not to just let it drop because it's sitting in a position that's not used to, especially if you have naturally straight hair, it'll tend to fall right down towards your face. So you just want to let it sit up here, it's still quite hot, so you just let it cool. And once you let it sit and cool a bit, then you can let it drop. So right now it's really curly, but it's okay because we're going to fix that at the end. We're going to move on to this side. So again, we're going to split the hair right in half from top to bottom. Pin this section away just so we have less hair to work with, it's more reasonable. We're going to spray. I always like working the hairspray through too, just so it doesn't get too crusty. But when you actually do use a working spray, it's a little bit easier to uh, move around. Have my BB cream. Really pull it through to the ends. Now I'm ready to start curling. So because we switched sides, we're not going to stick with the same direction as the other side of your head. You're going to curl away from this side of your face now. I noticed a little tip that I've kind of found helpful when I, as I've been curling my hair is that usually I find the parts of my hair that haven't been um, played with as much, whether that's with color or um, with heat, they always need to be held on the iron a little bit longer than the rest of them because they're not as porous and easy to style because they, they have more oils in them. So that's why I usually find near the back of my head 
I don't usually add color too much back there. So I find that when I'm curling back there, I always hold on just for a little while longer so that it has the same tightness of curl as the rest of my hair does. And also when you're working through your under, the under part of your hair, all your hair is going to be resting on that part of it. So you want to make sure that you, you let it sit on long enough. And again, we're hairspraying in the direction we want our curls to sit. Now to the top section. Start the back, your one inch section. Curling away from that side of your face. It's important to the angle you actually are holding the curling hair at. Because if I was holding this down like uh, more like more sloppy, it would be a lot harder for the curl to actually set how I want it to set. It would almost create like a divot in it, so it would ruin the, the whole curling technique you're doing. So that's why it's good to hold it nice and vertical so that you get a, a nice rounded curl. Alright, so now getting to the top of this part of my hair. So we're going to follow the exact same rule as we did for this side. I want nice volume like I said. So that means I have to readjust my curling iron. So I'm going to hold it upside down and wrap. And just until I wrap and then I'm going to twist it. Just so that I get the volume upwards and I get the curl still going to the right side of my face. And on the long enough, like I said, just hold it in spot and let it cool a bit so that it can still hold that same shape that we want it to. Alright, so now I'm going to give my hair a really good spray with my holding spray that I'm using. Make sure it's everywhere. If you use a spray that's not uh, super crunchy, then it's nice because you, when you have it in your hair, it's not going to be hard to work with the next day. Okay, so from here you could just leave it like this, super curly, but for me, like I said, I want a little bit more of a natural wave, so what I'm going to do is actually use the smoothing balm that I talked about earlier. Just take a little bit, about the size of a dime in your hand, rub it in your palms so you get good friction with it. I'm just going to start on the first side of my hair and start pulling my curls out. So start right from the root and try and them out. So now I'm controlling any frizz that I may have and creating a little bit of separation with my curls too. So now you can see the difference from one side to the next. So we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Again, all you need of this is about a dime size. Any sort of taffy or putty that you're using, that's all you really need. You don't want to overdo it because then you're going to make your hair really gummy and hard to work with and greasy. So again, start at your root and pull out. And I always just take for the front pieces because I have a little flyaways there. I always just make sure the bomb is touching them as well. Okay, so there you have it. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you guys. I can't wait for you to try it out for yourselves.